Hi, this is Dan Sullivan. I'd like to welcome you to the Multiplier Mindset Podcast. I'd like to just reflect a little bit on our free zone success story today, and that's Daryl Bellamy, who comes from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a fear coach. Very, very interesting. You know, the, what the human mind can focus in on and transform. And what he does, he goes around and he collects fears, and he's collected 50,000 fears. What he does, he looks at each of the fears and he thinks of the smallest action that you can take to actually transform the fear into motivation, into actual action and achievement. I was so tickled when I heard about that. I said, can you imagine that? I said, you know, for most people, fear is something you don't even want to talk to. And here's somebody who collects them. You know, he asks people, he interviews people. And I said, Humans are just amazing, you know, different kind of unique passions and interests that people can have. And we see this more and more in Strategic Coach. And my sense is that this wasn't possible 50 years ago. I don't think it was possible 25 years ago, but because of the technologies that we have for identifying people all around the world who would be interested in what you're interested in, it's possible now for a person to actually build a business, an entrepreneurial business, out of almost any interest that other human beings have, as long as you can create a community and you can create a following. Daryl's kind of like a triple header for me because he got interested in coaching. He knew he had to become a coach and he joined Genius Network with Joe Polish. Joe and I are lifetime buddies and he has a program called Genius Network. I'm you know, an entrepreneur in his program, and he's been in strategic coach for 23 years. And as a matter of fact, I just spent two hours on Zoom with Joe this morning. And he said, well, you know, if you're going to get a handle on your life, and you want to create a program around your fear coaching, he says, you, you got to go to strategic coach, you got to be in strategic coach. And then he found out the price, and he found out the qualifications, and he didn't qualify. So that became his goal. I have lots of individuals that the first big goal they achieved in their life was to actually make the amount of money that they actually qualified for a strategic coach. And they tell everybody about it when they get in. They say, you know, you know, this was my biggest goal. I have grown more just to get here than I had ever grown in any other situation in my life. But, you know, Daryl was also lucky because he, he comes from an entrepreneurial family. You know, my father was an entrepreneur all his life. And, you know, I just noticed that my father had control of his time. He he owned his time. He could spend every day the way he wanted to spend the day. And he worked with people he liked working with and didn't work with people that weren't his cup of tea. I was just so struck by the freedom that entrepreneurism creates. And I think this is more and more possible in today's world. So you take something like... Daryl, he's got a passionate interest in something. He drills down on it and he says, you know, I know more about this than anyone else in the world. And not only that, the moment I bring it up, people bring up their fears and they say, you know, how do you deal with something like that? And I've thought it through and you name the fear, I can name the small action that you can take that'll turn your fear around. What a world we live in, you know, what a marvelous, marvelous world. And, you know, if it's an entrepreneurial world, that's a marvelous world. So I, I'm just so thrilled to be able to bookend and comment on what Daryl is sharing with us. My name is Daryl Bellamy, Charlotte, North Carolina. I get the opportunity to travel around the country talking to mainly students and millennials and anyone else who will listen about fear. So I categorize myself as a fear researcher. So at this point, I've collected almost 50,000 written fears from students, millennials, and people, professionals across the country. I get a chance to, most of my business is done on a stage or now on Zoom virtually. I wrote a book. So I get a chance to travel in the country, pretty much speaking to students and people around what are the things that are stopping you and them from getting to that next level and helping them to get past that in their minds and in life. All those fears I collect, I read, I categorize, we put in the software so we know what, like, what are the top fears that are showing up. What are the top fears of people around the country? I've done three countries, 37 states at this point. The biggest one that I found, hands down, the biggest category comes down to the fear of not being enough. 
So it comes down to the confidence of what you believe about yourself. So that's the common thing that I see over and over again. The second one that's literally like a close second that sometimes might pass that one or they go back and forth is the fear of failure. I mean, oftentimes in business and life in school and whatever that is, oh, we don't push, we don't try to do certain things because we're afraid of like what will happen if we fail. So those are the two things that I focus on a lot in my keynotes and my talks and my programs to see if I can help people to break through those two to get to whatever that next thing is that they want. Oftentimes we are living with these things. We're having these things go through our mind and we never sit down and actually say like, this is what I'm dealing with. This is the thing that's controlling me. So in every program and every conversation that I have, I want people to first realize like, what is that thing that's stopping them? So the question that I ask people is finish the statement. I fear that. So you start with, I fear that. And you write, what is that thing that's stopping you from getting to that next level? And all of my programs, everyone starts at some point. They used to do it in person. They used to take the fear, drop in like a fake fire pit up front. Now they're dropping it into the chat. So we go through that. When it comes to just the confidence and the overall belief about yourself, I think there's little things that we can do on a daily basis. So for example, I, for example, keep a success resume. So this is a resume that no one sees, maybe my friends and family, people that I want to show, where I go back and on my success resume, there's a guy named Jesse Eisler who talks about his building your life resume, similar to that. On mine, I have like my top 10 things, my top 10 moments in my life that I am most proud of. Like, for example, when I brought my first house, when I first quit my job, when I tried something, I failed, and the next time I actually won the position. And then on the left-hand bottom corner, I have, like, what are the moments in my life that makes me smile? Because oftentimes, and this is what gets to be sad sometimes, gets me kind of emotional, is when, when I'm talking to people in general, anytime you're not confident or you don't believe in your abilities, you're oftentimes think about those negative moments in your life and not about all those little successes that we sometimes get in our life, and we just so totally just move past, move past it and think about what that next thing is. So anytime I'm feeling down, anytime I'm feeling like I'm not enough, and it's so easy to do that with social media and LinkedIn and comparing yourself and looking at your friends, I go back to that success resume and I'm like, oh, I did achieve that. I did do that. And that's just one of the simple ways um, that helps me. The second thing is oftentimes we don't start things, don't do things, not because of failure, but because we're afraid of what happens when we fail. So I think oftentimes I like, okay, what is the smallest step that I can take in most things in my life? I break down into the smallest steps where I feel the most comfortable. And then I'm amazed over time how those small steps create that staircase going forward. So I was always a kid, like selling candy in school, selling candy in the neighborhood. I was always trying to figure out like how to make money. <laughs> and my, my family always often jokes, like I was the guy like, I would always ask for like ones for my birthday, $1 bills, and I would like iron the money. So I always love money, but let's start there. <laughs> so literally, I think my dad growing up, he would often tell me, because he did really, really well, but he was in corporate America. He would often say, just from a young age, like, Daryl, entrepreneurship is the way to go. Entrepreneurship is the way to go. I know I'm doing well, but owning your own business, that's really what you want. So I heard that in my mind growing up, that that was always in the back of my mind where I realized I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I was always like reading books, I was just always doing that piece. So I got out of college. When I got out of college, before I got out, I tried to start a business called College Concierge. So I didn't take a job coming out of college. That business, I was trying to help first year students on campus get like food. That was before like Uber Eats. That was back in the day. I was trying to get them like leisure development. I was trying to get them around campus before like Uber came out. So all the services that are now separate now, I was trying to help students get their first year to kind of help them through that first year. I needed one parent to sign up. And I need 100 parents to sign up, and I wind up getting one parent to sign up, so I had to go get a job. So throughout my time in corporate America, I was trying to figure out how can I get college concierge to work? And I was trying to figure that out, retool it, trying to figure it out. And I didn't know what that next step was. But the great thing is most of the books that I was reading since middle school onward said that in order to be successful, you either need a mentor or a coach. I didn't have either, so I typed in life coaches in Charlotte. This lady popped up. I wanted a meeting with her. And by talking with her on things that I was interested in, I was like, I might want to get into real estate. I might want to speak to students, saying all these different things. And she said, Daryl, your face lit up when you said something about speaking to students. So what I wound up doing was I went to something called the National Speakers Association meeting. Never knew this organization existed. But when I got into that room, I was the youngest person in the room at the time. And I was one of the few people of color in the room. I was like, wow, there's an avenue out here for me to share my message. So from that moment on, I said, you know, I want to quit my job within a year. So throughout that year, I saved up almost $20,000 during that year. Started speaking for free at first. Started, you know, putting pictures up on a website. I started doing YouTube videos like once a week. I started putting YouTube videos out there. Started getting invited. 
And over the past, like, I'm going to say three to four years, so I, I was able to quit after that year, but over the past three to four years, I've been able to like almost triple my business just based on sitting down with that coach, having the dream since I was younger to be an entrepreneur and going from there. So that's my journey. If you are in the room, you deserve to be there. As a person of color, anytime I'm in a space, I deserve to be there. So, and I say that to myself, I don't care if, if the president of the United States is there, I don't care if <laughs> whoever that is, right? If you're in the room, then you deserve to be there and your voice is needed. And oftentimes, because you are that person of color, your voice is sometimes needed even more. So I think it takes time to get comfortable in certain spaces, but you have to just push yourself out there and do it. So just know that your voice is important and be okay with being uncomfortable. <laughs> being okay with being uncomfortable because those uncomfortable spaces oftentimes will become more comfortable the more you do it and the more you put yourself out there. But the only way to oftentimes get comfortable is to throw yourself in a fire. And what I realized that we expect, because I'm in, in certain areas of my life, I'm the same way where we expect for it to be easy and you don't want to go through the fire in order to do it. So jump in. Coming from corporate America where, you know, you had your schedule kind of place, you had somebody usually watching over in some sense, right? No matter what position you are, you had somebody kind of like, guiding you along that journey to being at home and you have your whole day and you have the bed upstairs. If you're at home, you can take a nap or like, like, so for me, my biggest struggle was just managing time and figuring out like, what do I do with this time and how do I make sure I stay focused? So that was my biggest struggle. And probably if I look at it, it's probably still is <laughs> four or five years later, it's still something where I'm always trying to manage. That's why the whole strategic coach system of, you know, buffer days, free days, how all those three days come in too, and how they have helped me so much and helped me throughout that. We're probably going to talk about this at some point or how they helped me throughout my journey is because I still sometimes struggle with, I love what I do. That was in Mexico last week. Right. And I still want to like answer emails. I'm still thinking about ideas, but it's like oftentimes telling yourself, or giving yourself the opportunity to shut down because it's that free time that ultimately frees you up for that next big idea or that next opportunity. So that would be my time or that would be my main issue was just overall just managing time and it's still a lifelong journey that I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> so there's like freedom and oftentimes if you truly want that freedom, you have to literally start delegating those things because I know that when it comes down to it, <laughs> I look at other successful entrepreneurs, for example, my strategic coach, or the things that Dan and Babs do and other people who are in the strategic system. And I know that some of them are making 10 times what I'm making, right? And they're able to take the days off. It just shows that it's possible, right? So I just think you have to first truly believe that it's possible, that you can do it. And don't beat yourself up when you might answer that email on that free day, right? Or don't beat yourself up when you might do sales on that buffer day. Just believe in the process, know that it works, and start taking those incremental steps. But one thing I did when I went to my first strategic coach session is I got home, you know, it's easy to jump back in and you jump back in and you're good for like a week, you have it going, that week two you start sliding off and I beat myself up and I realized, yo, no, that's not what you need to do, it's about taking those small steps. And I'm now making incremental processes that's starting to work over the long term. The one thing that helps me the most is the people I have around me other entrepreneurs, other friends who encourage me who have their own businesses, I would not be who I am today. I would not be constantly making the progress that I am without the people. I have another friend who's in the strategic coach program as well, who we get on the call literally 10, 11 a.m. every single day. We do like, what is the most important thing that you want to get done that day? What's something that you're thankful for? I guess that goes back to positive focus, right? One thing you're thankful for, and then we spend that hour on Zoom, right, with them muted, and you get that thing done, and then at 1055, we get back on, and we discuss what we got done with no phone on, all that stuff, right? So it's those type of conversations that no matter what, I know that I'm going to get that one hour where I'm going to get some stuff done throughout that day. Our friends do just encourage me, and I think that oftentimes we don't literally take real inventory of those people that are around us. Years ago is when I got off the phone with someone. When I left someone's presence, I asked myself, did that person add or did they take away from my life? And it was just a simple question. And what I started doing was the people who added something, I started having more conversations with, started scheduling more things with them. The people who took away, <laughs> I started having less. And that just totally improved my life. So the first biggest piece of success is like, you always have to be evaluating those people around you. Always, always, always. And it will make a huge difference in your overall success and, and what you do that next. The second biggest thing is I literally surround myself in my space 
with positive things, positive quotes. Like in my room, I'm in my studio right now, but in my room, I have think big on the wall, right? So it's above my, it's actually above my bed. One, one day when I get married, I'm pretty sure I'm about to take like think big in my dry erase boards off my room wall. But you know, just like, take that stuff off your wall. <laughs> like I'm always surrounding myself around those things because oftentimes we don't realize pretty much how that gets into our subconscious. And if those positive things can get in when it's just sneaking up, it can help you a lot. And the third thing is your morning routine and just getting up in the morning. I started doing this a while ago where on the first 30 minutes of the hour, it just depends on the day. I don't touch my phone. I try to do at least 50 push-ups a day. <laughs> I started there, you know, get on the cycle to do that. And then that translates to me getting into the gym, you know, some sort of prayer, some sort of like meditation time. So I would say my morning routine and making sure that my morning is off to a good start. is also very, very helpful to me in my journey. So those are the first three things that came to mind. I oftentimes, as I say, I speak to a lot of like younger individuals. So students, millennials, all that good stuff. But I often have people through Instagram or through LinkedIn or friends and family who's like, Daryl, like fear is something that we all deal with. Like, when are you going to talk to us? When are you going to start talking to us? So I'm really excited about and also really scared and nervous talking about fear, right? About doing my first virtual session for like the public. So I'm going to do my first keynote where like I can invite family, friends, colleagues to be able to talk about some of the issues that we as adults deal with on a daily basis. So that's the one thing I'm the most excited about, but also the most nervous about, because even though I've spoken to a lot of, I would say groups of adults or professionals, it's still not my comfort level, right? So I'm, that's the one thing I'm most excited about because I know it's going to push me. And I know that that's where like my life is going with impacting more people. It's all about the impact. So if I can impact more people, it's, it's going to be cool. So that, yeah, as I got into business, that coach that I told you about, when I was coaching with her, she was in strategic coach. So she would oftentimes just share with me some of the things that she was learning throughout the strategic coach program, which was cool because again, I saw the video. I knew what strategic coach was. She kind of reinforced it. So around last year, when I had my biggest year yet, what was I looking for? And how did I, I think I was, I wound up talking to my coach again, connecting with her. And then I got a call from she, coach like, Hey, are you interested? And for me, that was a full circle moment from watching him when I was in corporate, like not even having the capability, you know, finances to be able to afford, not even being an entrepreneur to literally be able to last year, be able to say, Oh, I can write that check easily. You know, and I even think twice about it. It was like, wow, I, it's kind of like I made a moment. That was one of those that could be one of those 10 moments on there to be able to see that full circle moment when I was able to do that. So that's my strategic coach journey from non-entrepreneur to entrepreneur, being able to just easily pay it and be really excited about the journey. I just want to wish everybody well. I know that we are in trying times right now. I mean, from you have the COVID-19 to, I mean, there's a lot of things, racial unrest, you have the presidential, there's just so much going on in our lives right now. I just want to encourage everybody, especially our entrepreneurs, everyone out there who's thinking about entrepreneurship, whatever that next stage is, to just take those small steps, know that everything always works out for good. <laughs> I truly believe that, that oftentimes I believe that things are going on in your life right now that you're oftentimes wondering like, why is this happening? You might be struggling with certain things. Entrepreneurs sometimes have some of these higher rates of anxiety and depression, depending on what's going on in their lives. And we oftentimes don't realize why we're going through these things. One of my favorite quotes for everyone listening, it's a quote by Steve Jobs, where he says that we can't connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect the dots looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect. I just want to encourage you and let you know that you might not understand why things are happening, why things are happening in your life right now. But I can almost guarantee you that in life going forward, you'll be able to look back and know why it was happening. And you'll be able to see how those dots connected in your life. One of the things that Daryl said that I so much agree with, this is actually the only way that you can deal with your fears. And he said, you've got to think of some small action that you can take. And my belief is that you can only solve issues, you can only overcome obstacles, you can only deal with fears if you're in motion. If you're stuck, if you're frozen by the fear, you can't solve the fear. The fear has you right where it wants you, but the moment that you commit, so we have the four C's, we have a concept called the four C's, that you have to commit that I'm going to overcome this fear, and then there's going to be a period where you have to go into action, and you don't yet have the capability, you don't have the confidence to actually deal with this, but you do have the courage. So where you don't have capability, you have to commit 
to going into action. And if you don't have the confidence, then you need courage. And it's the combination of commitment and courage. If I can interpret his taking the smallest action, there's a commitment to take action in the face of the fear. And then there's the courage to actually take the first step. It's being stuck, it's being paralyzed that makes you fear ridden. And the other thing is that you can't overcome the fears until you take action to counteract the fear.